preview. Hey everybody, this is Birch, and uh, deconstruction, it's, uh, it's a term that I thought was coming to its end because it got so overused. Back when uh, the Watchmen movie came out and, uh, it, and, and kind of everything around um, that, that zeitgeist of, of a moment of where we were supposed to look at heroes in a different way, where there was a dark side to all, there seemed to be this collective kind of exhaustion with deconstruction. And you notice that the MCU, uh, you know, tried to steer away from deconstruction. They tried to uh, to, to avoid, um, uh, you know, kind of getting too deep into into those elements, into elements that made the characters kind of overly uh, overly inner thinking, overly depressed, over you know all those elements. Uh, but I'm looking at solicitations uh, coming out for companies, and and we're still in this deconstruction world in comics, it feels like the people writing comics didn't get the memo or are still very kind of enamored with deconstruction. Um, I'm seeing interviews by some of the X office and they're talking about deconstruction and they're talking about, uh, you know, maybe these heroes aren't as heroic as we thought they were. And it's like, it just feels like somebody, you know, stumbled across stuff by Alan Moore last week, binge read it, and we're like, oh my God, this is great. What if we revealed that like the the great the the super good heroes that we thought that were really good are not good at all, and they're they're actually terrible evil people, and maybe the villains are are bad. It's um the here's the thing about deconstruction, and and this is kind of my my premise for everything in this video, kind of summed up in a couple sentences. So you can just tune out after this if you want. Um, it deconstruction doesn't work if you deconstruct everyone. The only reason deconstruction can you know be interesting and and cool for a character is if you've got a lot of you know straight laced good you know uh, normal kind of characters to bounce that off of. It works as a mirror. It doesn't work as a spotlight on everyone. And if you just start deconstructing all of the heroes, pretty soon you know the norm is the deconstruction, and then you're not deconstructing everything. That you're just you're that's what's been constructed everywhere. Does that to make sense? It's like um, deconstruction works if it's a abnormality, if it's a you thought you expected this, but it turns out this is what was really going on. But if, if you do that to everyone, then you expect everyone has been deconstructed. Do you see? I mean, it's it, it, you expect everything is is crappy. I think this is a problem with uh, Tom King's work when he's doing these miniseries. Yeah, sometimes they're they're you know very you know thought provoking, well written uh, maybe uh, stories about characters, but you know where they're going before you pick up the comic. It's like oh, this is going to explore kind of an angry, depressed uh, you know lost Supergirl. This is going to explore a uh, you know the the the, uh, the human target dealing with the Justice League. But the Wahaha era of the Justice League was not so happy and silly after all. There was actually a lot of you know, dour, depressing, you know, sad moments. And here's Mr. Miracle and he's depressed. And, you know, it, it, here's, you know, here's Mr. Terrific. He's also depressed and uh, he's going after Adam Strange, who is depressed. His wife is depressed. It's like at some point it's like, okay, all the characters are depressed. The norm for superheroes is depressed and probably a little hyper violent and probably a little, you know, liars who cover up their stuff and, are deeply flawed and don't care about their significant others. And I mean, like at some point that's everyone. And if all the writers take a swing at deconstructing their heroes, then you just have this, you know, very boring, very predictable mess of, you know, characters going nowhere. And I, I you know, it, it's, uh, the, it, it's kind of like the way we would make fun of marketing blurbs of like the, the fantastic four you thought you knew is not the fantastic four you knew. It's like, uh, okay. I mean, sure. As again, as a, as a cheap writing gimmick, you can do that. The marketing department, such as it is, might love that whole concept because it's, it's like, Hey, look, we're, uh, we're being very edgy, very cool here. We're, we're taking this, uh, this, these beloved characters, and we're, you know, turning them on their head. And it's, and 
Sure. I, again, if you constantly do that, if you constantly turn every character, every situation on its head, eventually the whole world is upside down. And that's, you know, who wants to read that? Very few people want to read that, as it turns out. That's the challenge that we have with, uh, with a lot of modern comics, is that they've gone to this particular well way, way too often. And so the, the other aspect of it is you've started to come to the conclusion that characters that haven't been deconstructed yet are almost certainly hiding some deep, dark secret. It's, it's a fact that at some point, Aquaman, uh, you know, polluted the ocean, peed in it, most likely. I mean, he, of course he's doing that, but he uh, doesn't really care about any of that. It's phony. He's probably uh, sold off aspects of Atlantis to oil drilling companies. I mean, you know, and, and he's just very cynical about the whole thing. He doesn't care if the world burns. It, it, uh, he doesn't. Superman, Superman has raped tons of people. He just flies around at super speed. Nobody even knows he's been there until much later. He's got, you know, children you know, everywhere. He's He cries every night about Krypton. He, he has these horrible nightmares about the planet blowing up and his parents dying. And the reason why he has a red cape is because it's blood. It's like blood pouring off of his back. That's how he thinks. And I mean, just eventually you get to this point where even if the writers haven't deconstructed the characters, you, you just kind of say, you, you kind of believe it's coming sooner or later, you know, sooner or later, all these characters are going to be revealed for the horrifying, you know, racist, awful, nightmarish monsters that they are, you know, murderers, all, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's all there, you know, it's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the problem with deconstruction. You do it and you do it and you do it and you do it. And, you know, I, I, I get the, you know, the pushback sometimes I know that writers have had, it was like, well, if, you know, if Alan Moore can do it, why can't I do it? It's like, well, first of all, you know, Alan Moore is pretty good at what he did when he did it. And there wasn't, he didn't do that much of it. I mean, Watchmen, everybody knows that it got to be a big deal because they, that, that title was very popular and they printed and printed and printed it. And it was in trade and there was a movie and all the rest and it was everything, but, but you didn't have to go and take Captain Carrot and uh, turn him into a homophobe uh, bigot who secretly beats his wife. You, you didn't need to do that. That was not necessary. But, you know, you, you did it anyway. Uh, deconstruction should be used very, very, very sparingly. I think that's the, uh, that's the takeaway here. Anyway, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I joke, but like half the pitches that I gave, see, this is a problem. I believe that they're coming. I mean, I, I absolutely, you know, when, when Tom King gets announced for a new limited series, it's like, oh, you know, I wonder what kind of neurotic impulse this character is going to have. And I wonder, does Tom King like that? Does DC like that? Does, does Tom King enjoy the fact that when people see his name show up on a solicitation, they assume that uh, we're about to get, uh, you know, a, a kind of dredging through the dark recesses of this flawed character's mind and that uh, everything, everything is bad. I mean, does, does, does Tom King like being so predictable? I, I, would, I wouldn't. If I was Tom King, I would resent that, that, that pretty much everybody is expecting, like, when I come onto a character that I'm going to, you know, write some kind of hellish nightmare emotion out of this, this guy. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be known that way. I don't know. I, I think, I, don't writers want to be known for being kind of bringing new, unique, powerful stories that, uh, you know, you, you have to read to know where they're going. Isn't that the goal? If, if, if you're just churning out stuff, people know from the very beginning, that seems, that seems, uh, I don't know, seems like a waste of everyone's time, but what do I know? So do you like deconstructed stories? I mean, the, the, the elephant in the room here is that the fan base at the moment, and I think that, I think it is wearing off, but for a big period of time, they liked the deconstruction. They they went for it. The oh my goodness, I I didn't realize that uh, Professor X was creeping on uh, Jean Grey when she was you know fifteen. I didn't. Wow, what a what a cool revelation. I am more excited about the X Men now. I said nobody ever, but I mean there were people who who really went for deconstruction as a marketing technique. The the dark secret is still something that sells. It's still something that that people will go to the shop and will pay attention to and will buy. Um. But again, it feels like that's wearing off and it feels like there's more and more exhaustion. And it feels like with every deconstruction, 
there's uh, lower sales because we've just we've seen it over and over and over again. But um, but maybe I have it wrong. Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.